Hello everyone, it's Mr. John from AK Dragfish 3D, and this is the next video in our Adventure Fishing Recon set. And this is all about the prep work. So, we've done our research, we know where we're going, we've looked at, you know, what's going on there, how to get there, and so on. But how do we compile all this data down into one shot, one thing to take with us? So, that's where the fun part of spreadsheets comes into play. Yes, spreadsheets and math. But no, seriously, this helps. Check this out. Okay, so here's what I got. Here's something I've worked on for quite a long time. This is a living document. There's quite a bit to unpack here. However, I don't know a swing and soul in my circle of friends, acquaintances, co-workers, and whatnot that do not have access to Google Sheets. This is a spreadsheet, it's online, I have access to it. Yet again, I waggle my phone at you. I can bring this up on my phone, I can bring this up on the computer, I can bring this up pretty much anywhere I have access, the thing. I can even download it to my phone and just run it normally. The point I'm making here is packing list, packing list, packing list, packing list. Can't stress a packing list enough. So I go out, I break my trips down into three different types. I break my trips down into power hours where I'm fishing one I'm fishing one hour or less from the time I leave the house. Or day trips, 90% I'm, I'm gone all day. I get up in the morning, I leave, I'm gone all day. 90% chance I'll come back tonight. 10% chance I'll come back tomorrow morning. But I do come back tomorrow morning. Or then overnights where I plan for high night high day excursions like a trip to Kenai for example down there three four days and then I'll come back go to Glen Allen for two three days come back whatever and then I've got my packing list all my different lists so I'm not sure what everyone else packs but I make sure I pack my fishing gear I make sure I pack filming equipment I make sure I pack ways to charge my phone I make sure I pack water very least water change of socks change of pants in case I get wet if I do bring chest waders rubber boots etc make sure I bring a safety whistle first aid kit I live in Alaska. Bear spray is a requirement. I live in Alaska. A gun. Kind of is neat. Don't really need a gun all the time. I feel more comfortable. Because bear spray don't work on wolves. Or coyotes. Or moose. No tarp, flashlight, you know, that kinds of things. I don't have it all on me. But at least I have it in my car. My car is me at that point. I am traveling. Day tripping. All this stuff. Plus extra gear, extra gear, extra gear, extra gear, extra gear. Packing list, packing list, packing list, packing list. Second thing, it's finances. You gotta be able to have enough gas to get there and back. And you gotta have enough, and you gotta know how much money you need. So, once again, I use Google, I use spreadsheet, spreadsheet math here. We're focusing on right there. This comes back to research. So I know gas in town is 334 a gallon, roughly. I know gas in Glen Allen is 450, and I know it's about 500 miles to Glen Allen, plus or minus, give or take. If I do the math, Gas alone should be 130 for the trip. Okay? That's assuming my car has 30 miles per gallon. I got a 9.5 gallon tank. Now these numbers will vary depending on people's. Say we take my buddy's hybrid. He's got 40. He's got 12. That 25 gallon tank. Now you can see how the number change. How much gas am I gonna spend? How many tanks? So on and so forth. So this right here is important. This right here is important because sometimes you might go somewhere that you don't have gas stations or gas stations are been two months out of the year or maybe they take cash only which brings me to my next point bring cash hard cash do not rely on credit cards everywhere you go bring cash you never know plenty of times i rolled up a gas station some remote location and they didn't have a card machine they didn't have an atm they were straight up cash. Make sure you have cash. Or the point I'm making out for this highlighted cell is if I go to Coldfoot, for example, there's a couple spots just south of Coldfoot that, you know, I don't have a gas station for a hundred miles. I gotta make sure I plan appropriately the number of tanks I need to get there to back 175 times two, that's three, three and a half tanks half tanks times 
9.5, 3.5 times 9.5 bring it. So let's assume I, I have to get all my gas now because there's no gas station where I'm going. And I'm 500 miles out. And three quarter tanks there and back. Three and a half tanks round trip. And I got 33.25 gallons. $3.34 a gallon. I dropped that. Grab four tanks of get three and a half tanks of gas. And say we'll artillery round to four. And then we're going. Gas planning. Planning. And this is planning before you even get out of the chair. You gotta know these numbers before you even get out of the chair. Who knows what's gonna happen out there? So if you plan ahead of time, that makes life easier. Second point I want to make about planning before you even get up is weather. Do a weather check. I add this so I have you know weather.com sake of hey I can quick click on weather it's up to you whether or not you use weather.com accuweather look at the weather I can't stress this enough look at the weather absolutely no sense to not go oh it's gonna be next Sunday is gonna be seven degrees it might feel warm today but that's a hell of a jump before we I don't know go ice fishing on Sunday if you're an ice fisher. One last point about planning and looking ahead is knowing what you're doing when you're there. I'll say it again, knowing what you're doing when you're there. For example, my overnight bag, my overnight packing list is going to modify drastically depending on if I'm going to Glen Ellen just to go fish lakes versus going to fish the Copper River. I'm gonna have a different overnight bag. I'm gonna have a different food storage cooler. I'm gonna have more ice. I'm gonna pack more water. You gotta adjust. This is a living document. I've probably modified this document seven, eight times, at least twice a year. Make sure these links still work for weather.com. I've added more links here. I've added this 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 section I've added in the last year. And then the final point I'm gonna make: prepping before you get out of your chair. Share, share, damn plan. Share it. Share your plan. And say this enough. Share your plan. Don't be all stingy. Be like, oh no, you can't know my efficiency spots. No, that's a huge red flag for me. I won't go fishing with you. I will not do anything outdoor with you if you don't tell your wife where you're going. You don't write down a grid location and put it on your fridge. You don't have enough guts. Know your friends and family where you're going, what you're doing for the weekend. I'm not going in the outdoors with you. End of story. So I'm going to tell my wife, yes, I'm going to Chena Lakes. I'm going to walk three laps around that lake. I'm going to be gone all day. I'm going to catch catch my limit. I'm probably going to have a picnic and then I'm probably going to come home. That's a day tripper. I do that a lot of the times on Saturdays and I let people know. Why? Because there's wildlife. Wildlife safety. I could get eaten by a bear. I could decide to feel froggy and try to jump over a creek, slip, fall, get a stick in my leg been there done that it hurt like hell a million and one things could happen i could have a random shooting a hunter doesn't see me a bullet in my back or maybe a moose runs me over i hit a moose on the way home who knows the point i'm getting at is someone knows where you're at so when you don't check in they know where to go look plenty of stories you can you can look up about people just Rando walking off in the woods because they think it's safe. I think about the story about last year, the two hikers that got lost up in Chena Ridge, staying at Chena Hot Springs Road. They didn't tell anybody where they went. They decided to go on a hike. They were missing for three days. They found them on like day four or five or something like that. Tell people, share your plan. Especially if you're going with someone. Because who knows, maybe you share your plan and they go, that's a good idea, can I go with you? I love it, I love when my kids do that. And I'm like, hell yeah, come on, let's go. With all that said, this concludes the desk portion of planning for Adventure Fishing Recon. The next portion would be in the garage, in the car, practical preparation. I'll cover that in a set of videos later. For now, do all the standard YouTube stuff. Go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe if you're finding this useful. Uh, check out the rest of the channel, and above all else, for watching.